Welcome to our digital gathering on this Trinity Sunday. While still a dispersed community, we gather again to listen to Scripture's wisdom, to offer prayer, to strengthen ourselves and our relationships, and I thank you for joining us. Please remember Don and I are available by phone. We plan to hold in-person worship beginning next Sunday. Um, we're still looking for a few cleaning supplies, I believe, because we're required to sanitize between services. So watch for a special edition of the Lawrence Field Connection. It will tell us all about that. And we will continue to have online services and activities. So if you have a candle available, please consider lighting it. Light is one symbol of God's presence among us. Blessed be our God who creates, redeems, and sustains us. And blessed be God's kingdom, kingdom now, now and, and forever. forever. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful and, and gracious Father, Father you, you showed the, the fullness of your love when you gave your only Son for our salvation, and sent down upon us the power of your Spirit. Complete within us the work of your love, that we who have communion in Christ may come to share fully the undying life he lives with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Second Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We have a por portion of Canticle 13. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You, you are, are worthy, worthy of praise. praise. Glory, Glory to you. you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We, we will praise you and highly exalt you forever. forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On, on the throne, throne of your, your majesty, majesty, glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will, will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths. In the, in the high vault of heaven, heaven. Glory, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We, we will, will praise you and, and highly exalt you forever. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, Lord Christ. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, 
and teach them, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. This is for our children. I'm going to come up here with this. I think that's probably pretty good. This is from, gosh, 1600s, I think. The, it's called the Rublev icon. Rublev was the artist. And it's a very interesting depiction of the three persons of God. And since this is Trinity Sunday, I thought we'd talk about them. One thing to notice is that each of these figures has some blue. And here blue is representing that which is sacred. So representing the godness of God. This figure is wrapped in green, representing the earth. This figure, yellow for holiness, the red for bloodshed, that represents Jesus. The one on the earth represents the Holy Spirit. And this is the Father. You can see him almost clothed in a garment that, for those of you that know Harry Potter, looks like the invisibility cloak. It's to show that God the Father is something we cannot see. So this is in one way a picture of the family of God, except there's something missing. Right here in this part on the original one of these, which I think is in a museum, scholars that study art and paintings think that there was glue here that there was a mirror and so this show that when you stood in front of this and let the images soak in this family of God it showed that you too are part of God's family and not only you but each one of you each of your friends each of the people that lives on your street and goes to your school and lives in this city we're all part of the family of God I want you to remember that that uh, while we can have a picture of God's the family of God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit this picture isn't complete until we bring ourselves to being within this family, embraced and loved and cared for. For those of us who have been in the Episcopal Church for quite a while, when we see triangles and interlocking circles and clover leaves appear, we know it must be Trinity Sunday. A Sunday strangely dedicated to a doctrine. Now, spoiler alert, if you want to cut your teeth on a well-researched academic treatise on the nature of the three persons of God, three in one, one in three, you will be disappointed. As I look at the readings today, today is a celebration of community, of creating and living in peaceful, caring communities. The psalmist speaks about humans being made a little lower than the angels and having been given mastery over the works of God's hands. To me it speaks as well of having been created in the image of God and entrusted with the work of caring for God's creation and all created beings. But what does it mean to be created in the God, image of God? I believe it means that we are social beings not meant to live in isolation. A baby or young child who may, in many ways is still a vast bundle of potentiality is already a social being. 
we humans are created for community. How this relates to God is seen in the icon Nancy has shown us, the ruble of icon. We see three persons of the Trinity at a table interacting. This is a visual reminder that in our human experience of God, we find relationship expressed in several ways. As creator, as Jesus the Christ, and as spirit. To me it says that God is not a rugged individualist, nor are we created to be. God creates community as a part of creation itself by forming humans as social beings with a need for relationship and for others. Recall, if you will, that in Jesus' time, society was built on exclusive clans and tribes to which one belonged. These factions competed and were often at war with one another. Yet, in his ministry, Jesus chose to form a community of friends and followers to which anyone could choose to belong. And Jesus told them to continue the work of reconciling all people, of creating and maintaining open communities of caring, sharing, and compassion. Lawrence Field is a special place. We know this from our experience and from the stories of your experience of that specialness. We see you living intentionally as best you can as an open community that knows and cares about one another. And while human beings do not always live it out perfectly, you do it well. In the reading from St. Paul today, he tells the community at Corinth how to be a better community. It may sound familiar. Seek agreement. No backbiting, no murmuring, no fostering division. Live in peace with one another. But we have to note that often for us, peace means the absence of strife. But for Jesus, shalom meant seeking the well-being of all, a working for the common good of everyone. He advises us to look for God's peace and presence in one another, because really, if we don't look for it, we may be too busy to notice when it's right there before us. Be compassionate and caring for others. Don't just talk about it. Demonstrate it in how we act and interact with others with whom our life intersects. Sadly, there is an elephant in the room we need to speak of in order to hear and apply the scripture. The elephant is the events in the nation this week fraught with disunity, dissension, and disagreement, as we have witnessed senseless violence and murder. The gospel admonition to see one another as a child of God who is loved by God and to work for shalom is especially needed in a fractious climate. Add to this Jesus' teaching to intentionally, by action, love one another as we have been loved by God, and to stand with those seeking justice and end to oppression. Part of the way we do this is by living into existence the kind of community we want to have. Remember, what we water with our attention, we get more of. If we want the kind of diverse, united community Jesus created, we have to live it into being here in our corner of the world in very real day, ways, day by day. In the Gospel today, Jesus gives his followers the un seemingly impossible task of sharing with others what they have found living in community as God desires it to be. We are to invite others into this open community, tell our story and the story of faith. 
continue to base our life together in the relationship we see in the triune God to intentionally model how we are to live in community, recognizing all others as beloved children of God. We're not going it alone. The Gospel concludes with a promise of continuing relationship. Jesus tells us, I am with you always. Open community is lived out in the knowledge of Jesus' presence and is expressed as we lament and mourn inequity, murder, and violence, as well as in our sharing prayer, communion, and community. I think we can let the theologians dance on the heads of pins discussing the nature of the persons of God. They can drone on about the full but unknowable mystery of God. Our real work is to live out the image of God who created us to be in community and who has called us to be part of this community. Let us continue to invite others to join us to hear good news for all of God's people and to gather at the table of the Lord, both of which help us to shape our lives and our actions. It is through intentionality of our lives and actions to follow Jesus' teaching and values that we model for others the good news we have found and experience in community. Amen. Let us pray. Rejoicing in the mighty acts of God, let us lift our voices and pray. Risen Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us give thanks to God for the multitude of blessings showered upon us, for our lives and for those whom we love, for the beauty of this abundant earth which God has created for us to care and tend for our families and our friendships. Let us give thanks to the God of life. Risen Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for the church that it may carry forward the life-giving works of God. For those gathered in spirit and in prayer, for the many lay people who serve the church and who serve as the church in the world, for our clergy and bishops, risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the nations and the peoples of the world, that the powers that oppress and destroy may decline, and that justice, peace, and compassion and health may increase. Risen Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for all those who are sick, those who suffer, those who struggle, that our hope born of Easter and sustained by the Spirit may give them peace, resilience, acceptance, and renewal, and that they may come into closer communion with the God who redeems and restores. And we pray for all those who have died. Risen Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for the forgiveness of our sins, for those which we have done and for those we allow by our inaction or ignorance. We pray that we may share the inexhaustible forgiveness of God we receive with those who have offended us. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, grant to your people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you and your people in a quiet mind. This we pray in the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Amen. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. 
As the Father sends me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I invite you to hold God's peace in your heart and envision all the people of God, of Lawrencefield Parish Church, other faith communities, other communities, held in this marvelous peace. Peace be with us. Peace be with us. Peace within us. Peace within us. Peace beside us. Peace beside us. Peace over us. Peace over us. Peace in quiet. Peace in quiet. Peace in danger. Peace in danger. Peace in the hearts of all who love us. Peace in the hearts of all who So what we will do today is called spiritual communion, as defined by St. Thomas Aquinas. It is an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. In this way, we will have our community with Jesus, have our communion with Jesus in community. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples. He also blessed the cup, saying, Take, drink from this, the cup of blessing poured out for you. And now we are bold to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the, and the power, power and, the and the glory, glory forever, forever and, ever. and ever. Amen. Let us pray the prayer for communion with Christ. In, In union, O oh God, with, with your faithful people at every, every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is celebrated, I offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. God be with us. God be with us. God within us. God within us. God beside us. God beside us. God over me. God over us. God in quiet. God in quiet. God in danger, God in the heart of all who love us, God in the hearts of all who love us. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for, for restoring, restoring us in, in your, your image. image 
and and nourishing us with spiritual food. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The fire of God change you. The wind of God change you. The breath of God change you. The Spirit of God change you. And the blessing of God, the Holy Trinity, be upon you and remain with you always. In the name of God who creates, redeems, sustains, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Our worship has ended. Our service to God and God's people begins. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.